consensus seems to be a nine-month extension to the deal, but I'm also hearing that there's this additional three months. A, do you support the nine months? And B, what is this additional three months Novak et al. are talking about? Well, so certainly uh, I support the nine months straight up um, because I think it gives a longer gestation period to see how prices move, how stocks stay, how the reserves uh, in most countries are holding up. Uh, but but the, the 12 months agenda is it's a conversation being had along a longer term type extension. And, and the reason why uh, it's most people are lining around it is that uh, if we know ahead of time that in nine months' time, when we do meet, um, we will be able to have a three months further review, look at stocks, look at pricing, look at behavior of the market, and then potentially roll over for additional three months. It helps with better planning, it gives a longer term perspective to, to producers. Uh, but more important, uh, that is the sort of calculation we're having in terms of what time it's going to take to be able to balance that market. Is everybody on board? On the nine months, largely. On the 12 months, still conversational, as far as I know. So it could still turn this afternoon. Venezuela say the market will rebalance. I caught up with the minister in the lobby of the hotel here. Rebalance by the end of the year. The IEA are telling me that it will be in deficit by the end of the, end of the year. As you run the numbers, minister, what do you think for the end of the year? Rebalancing? I'm not as aggressive as some of my colleagues. Uh, I, I, I'm looking at rebalancing more in the first quarter of next year. Uh, and so that's why I'm very supportive of the nine months agenda, because it brings you right in the smack of the end of, end of first quarter. Are you sufficiently wary of U.S. shale? That's a proposition that some in OPEC are blinkered. They're not taking shale seriously enough in the United States. How do you look at it? Uh, I think, I think, it's, I think it's, it's realistic to take them seriously. Uh, the reality is that each time we, we hedge out on numbers, they, 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 they try to close that in. But, but I think, and I think it's smart for pose of calculation that you see what the behavior is looking like. Um, and I think whether or not we, we keep blindsided about it, we do seriously, quite frankly, consider it in most countries. Now, are they going to long term really be of such an impact? My, I'm one of those who are basically middle line. I think that they, they've not fully exhausted their capacity to hurt us. Uh, but, but I think the longer term impact on us will be very limited if we continue to behave the way we are responsibly within OPEC and non-OPEC members of this team. I have it on good, good, good authority that you're a man that's brave. You get a nine month deal. A movement towards rebalancing, what does it do to the price of oil? A $50 floor, or where does this agreement take us to? Oh, uh, the smartest people in the world avoid uh, trying to make calculations on pricing. But, but, Be but, the brave but, one. But, 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 I, but I think that if we keep to the rules, uh, if we keep to the discipline and all the numbers uh, show extreme good compliance, then we should look at a $50 floor continuing. I mean, uh, on a positive note, or on a spe uh, an optimistic note, there are lots of us who hope we can crawl back to 60 you know, uh, today it's about 54 on Brent. Um, let's see what happens by the time we finish and really confirm the nine months. Uh, and if there is, in fact, a consensus around 12 months, what sort of impact it gives. But, but um, uh, 60, um, given the last six months' behavior, seems to be very optimistic. 50, very realistic. You have an exemption. Yes. Nigeria has an exemption. Mm -hmm. You have begun loading again at Forcados. Um, what is your production? What do we think that Nigeria is going to produce this year and have you felt any pressure at this meeting to join the cuts or to have a cap? Mm. Well, well, first, uh, our production is still relatively one, uh, roughly about 1.5 million barrels on, on an average. We've had spikes you know, of higher levels, but when you take an average of the month, it's about 1.5. Still below the 1.8 uh, that is expected to be the catch point. Focados is beginning to load, but uh, the reality is those are test loadings. Uh, we, we still need to repair a lot of the secondary infrastructure that were damaged by militancy. It will take us about six months to get there. Uh, but my projection is that within the six to nine months window, we should be able, all things being equal, militancy remaining calm, you know, and, that, and, and the investments that are required being do, urgently done to repair the existing pipelines, we should get to the sort of figures that we had before, and which, if you knock off the condensates, will largely place in the 1.8 million barrels category. At that point, uh, the sort of, of course, right now we have a bit of subtle what was going on. Uh, but the secondary and primary sources justify that those are, our numbers don't justify us joining the park yet. But quite frankly, when we do, um, the, the pressure is going get, to get on for us to join uh, that ex um, uh, the, court, the court team. What, what? And, and Nigeria is not, Nigeria is not uh, uh, averse to that because I think everybody needs to make the necessary sacrifice to help um, avoid the price stability uh, and worldwide, on a worldwide basis. What do you make of the proposition? Um, a whole variety of people ha have spoken to me and they've said, look, um, this is about non-OPEC and OPEC, not so much production cuts, 
but about reducing exports. Where do, where, what's your perspective on that? that? That's where the difficulty has been. You can implement cuts, but that OPEC is still exporting like Bilio. No, I don't think so. All the numbers that we see show, as of April, about 107 uh, percent compliance by OPEC members, uh, roughly about 92 percent by non-OPEC members, an average of about 102 percent global. Um, it's both cuts and export. Um, I haven't seen any data that suggests that uh, we're producing but yet not exporting. Uh, but at the end of the day, market is uh, a lot more uh, on the basis of export anyway. I mean, yes, you have individual consumptions within countries, but that's not what impacts price as much as the exports that you do. And in terms of uh, the balancing of this market, um, there's been a huge amount of capital expenditure taken out by the independent oil producers. The impact of that, do you think that we felt the impact of that already uh, in terms of the production side and the refining side? Uh, certainly for Nigeria we have. Uh, we're beginning to see a lot of our big projects come back. Uh, Bonga is, is getting ready to move. Um, 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 Ajip is getting ready to move uh, with their own projects. We're, we're looking at, quite frankly, a potential return of between 15 and 20 billion dollars uh, over the over the next couple of uh, 12 months, over the next couple of months to one year. So the impact definitely is the confidence is definitely back. Now, on a global basis, has it done much? Mm -hmm. It's been very fairly slow on an average, uh, and that's understandable. People are still watching the market with caution. Seven big wins is your project for change within the oil industry. Uh, an update for us. Moving very well, the part of it is security. Security, I think, we made quite a lot of progress. Uh, still a lot of work to be done to keep it stable. Uh, in terms of the policies aspect of that, very good progress. Uh, gas policies, petroleum policies, the contributions to PIB already within the Federal Executive Council, so we're making progress on that. JV cash calls, um, sorted out, paid, um, renegotiated. Uh, so a, lo a lot of dramatic movement. Now, the infrastructural aspect of uh, seven big wins is still a big gap. We need to get in investments into infrastructure. We're still developing the models that will encourage investors to come um, on that. There's something which obviously I'd, I'd, I'd like to check out with you. Um, some people are hoping that you're not going back to Exxon. You spoke recently. You said, look, if we, don't con if we continue to import refined products into Nigeria, that you're prepared to resign. Is that correct? Have you a clarification on that? Point? Yes, yes. Uh, the people are focused more on the resignation than the fact of a focus on trying to get refineries to work. For me, it's, it's a no-brainer. We absolutely have to have refineries work. But it's going to depend on a couple of things. It's going to depend on the union be being with us in that. It's going to depend on the owners of the asset and NPC. Uh, Nigeria, that is national oil company, being able to go at the same speed as I'm going, I hope they will. It's going to also depend, quite frankly, on, on militants remaining as calm as it is. Uh, but if all those things are taken and, and, we, and we're able to accomplish on those, my conviction is that we still can deliver on 2019. The reality is that when you repair all the refineries, there's probably still a little gap in terms of uh, actual consumption versus refinery, local refinery production. But we think that an upgrade will be able to remedy that. Now, I've said that if that doesn't happen by 2019, we have all failed, and, and I will be on my way exiting. The reality is that in 2019, really, uh, the, the, the end of the time for the first government will, will come. And, and so we'll be talking really in terms of a follow-up. Follow so, Minister, you're with us for a while? Yeah, I hope so.